Okay, uh, we're gonna make today a. I'm gonna make a a, a blank a HDPE blank from uh, cut up five gallon buckets. Uh, the yellow strips. These are from a, a pickle bucket, and these light blue strips are from a five gallon bucket I bought new. Cost me like under three dollars at Walmart. Uh, so I have my colors, and this is my pan. It's an eight inch square side Calphalon pan. I think I got this for about eight dollars at like a Michael's or a Marshall's or something. The thing you'll look for when you're picking your pan out, you want to pick something that has as sides that are as square to the bottom as possible because when you compress it, uh, the how much ever HDPE molten plastic you have in there, if it's at an angle, it will be difficult to get the appropriate size lid at that same angle because it will change depending on how much you're cooking. So if you get a pretty square sided one, you can just use one and then it doesn't matter how thick or thin you're making your blank, it will fit flush. And with the style of cooking we're going to do, we're going to do um, more of a, we're not going to force it down, we're just going to try and keep it from buckling. So it's a lot less force on your pan which will allow it to last longer and I tend to use these uh, grilling sheets I just cut one to fit there and just sits in the bottom so here we go I'll show you how I stack it in there all right we've got the pan and we'll start taking strips now you can line these up in any way you want I'm gonna go with a a four four and four pack now as they're curved I'm going to put them in opposite. I'll show you. So they fit like that. Okay, we're going farther along. I clamp the, the pan down. Okay, we're getting pretty close to getting a finish here, full pan. Now, I like to work these down a little bit, make sure that they're kind of evenly put in there. Looks like I can get a little more in there. The more you get in, the straighter it'll be. This is the tricky part. But that's our, that's gonna be our blank. So let's uh, set up the oven and we'll see what we get. Here we go. And we'll check back on that in a little while. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Let's see what we get. Okay, and you can see the different principle or qualities of uh, melting in this uh, different types of HDPE. The blue, the blue is melting much quicker, right? See that the yellow, even on the edges, still you can see the separate, the separate individual pieces where all of the blue has basically already fused together. Well, started to at least on the tops. So let's put it back in the oven. We'll check on it a little later. All right, it's been one hour. Let's see what we got. Okay, you can see that it's starting to char up a little bit. We're gonna let that go some more because you can still see some of the individual layers here and here. Those will need to go. All right, let's put it back in. Wait for some bubbles to show up. Let's see what we get. All right, it's been about hour and 45 minutes okay so we got a pretty good char on it looks pretty good can opener suggested letting it air out letting some air get under it his is a lot taller this just happened to have him what we're gonna do is wait until we can get uh, this scraper I'm gonna run it I'm gonna let it uh, start to pull away from the edge here because it's, it's pretty soft right now once it pulls away from the edge, I will run the scraper along it and free it from all four sides. And then I will put it under clamping pressure. 
you want to let it do that because if you tried clamping it right now, you just squeeze out everything and be a huge mess. When HDPE cools, it goes from kind of a reflective liquid state to more of a matte finish. You can see it right along the edges already starting to do that. Let's see if we can't get in there. Yeah, right there, starting to do that. Now, first you just want to get it on, not too much pressure. We'll do that in a second. And now it's kind of like lug nuts. You just go around, tighten them a little at a time. Now here's where the gradient comes in, or the ply. You can use those as like your own measurement. See how it's higher over here. So we crank that side down. Looks pretty good. Go to the next one. And it looks like the back is higher, so I'm gonna crank that down a little bit. Looks pretty good. Let's look over here. This side needs to come down quite a bit, doesn't it? better and now for here should be pretty good nope a little more right here it helps me kind of get low so we're going to chase that around all right good enough and now i'll come back and tighten those in five or six minutes all right here's our blanket just took the clamps off and it's uh, pulled away from the sides. It's pretty flat. I'm pretty happy about that. Take it out of here. But you notice, I'm really dissatisfied with the bottom of this pan, with this blank. I've never actually had this happen before. But you can see it's clearly not fused at the bottom here. So Lord knows what that means for inside. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the exact same thing. If you ever have, if you ever have an issue with a, a melt, and you're not satisfied with the way your blanks come out, you can always just remelt it. So I'm going to put it back in the oven, and we're going to cook it from this side. All right, uh, I've let this sit overnight. Let's... Okay. Looks good. This was the top uh, when we melted it the first time. So it still looks fine. And here was the bottom, which is now the top, which looks like it is fused quite nicely. All right, we're going to run this through the uh, thickness planer. All right, well, here's my planed blank. There are some imperfection in it, the imperfections in it where they didn't quite bind properly. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't fuse properly here. Like you can see it right there. Those little black lines are little cracks. So that obviously can't use that. So there are big sections of this that appear to be usable. And there's one big crack on this side here 
the rest of it. You know, there's some right here too. So I'm not sure exactly what went wrong. I've never actually used this blue, this light blue before, and I've only used the yellow want to make one other blank. And it seemed to work all right, although it does seem to need uh, a little more time to melt. So I'm still going to be able to use this. Uh, this would just be for a personal use, though. I would never give this to anybody because you can't trust it when it didn't come out perfect. But uh, at the same time I was making that, I made this blank here. And this blank had uh, no issues at all. You can see the interior. It came out pretty well flawlessly. And here's the two slingshots I made out of it today. And in the next video I'll show you how I make those and all of that. Okay, thanks for watching.